Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Century YouTube channel, where I'm going to go through commas with you today. My name is Ali, and I'm an English teacher here at Century. I've made this video especially for you today because commas are one of the most common forms of punctuation, but also one that uh, is used incorrectly. And today we're going to be looking at commas at quite an advanced level. Um, we can see how they can and can't be used to help structure a sentence and how they can be important to ensure clarity in a sentence. Hopefully you will know what a comma is and many of you will have been taught them years ago and think possibly that you're experts on them. But just as a reminder, lots of adults still get commas wrong. There'll be a lot to take in today, um, but actually on Century itself, we break down all the uses of a comma into individual uh, lessons, which we call nuggets. Um, and there are questions on there so you can quiz yourself and you can then spend more time going over each model if you need to. Also, uh, once we're done here, um, you can go back to this video, pause it and watch it again um, to look at the specific parts if you need to. Before we get started on this lesson, I will uh, take a few minutes just to kind of talk you through Century. Some of you may already have accounts, but if you don't have an account, you can set one up. Um, while the schools are closed, we want to support you with your learning. So we are offering you access to hundreds of English maths and science lessons for free. One of the best things about Century is that you it uses artificial intelligence. So you get to know what you need to learn and how you learn best. And it completely personalizes your learning for you. Once you've set up your account, you can get learning straight away. So parents and guardians, if you're watching, uh, you can visit century.tech forward slash parent sign up to get your child started. And if you're over the age of 13, you can sign up too. Don't worry about writing this address down. Uh, I'll put it in the link in the description at the bottom. Keep an eye on our schedule as well for any future live lessons we might be running. So let me switch over now to the lesson. I hope you enjoy it. I mentioned before that we are going to be looking at quite advanced punctuation today and I know that comma doesn't sound like it's advanced punctuation but actually many adults use commas incorrectly in their writing and for lots of you your lot use of punctuation will be assessed in your GCSEs so it's really important that you understand the rules about commas and you practice using them correctly in all of your writing. So when do we use commas? So we use commas to separate items in a list. And here's an example of that. The creature was round, covered in green fur and had a toothy grin. Here we have a comma separating round and covered in green fur, the first two items in this list. Now, most of you would have learned about commas in a list in primary school and thought, well, I've got this now, I completely understand it. But the, for those of you that have ever heard of the Oxford comma or serial comma, you'll know that even if this simple use of a comma is in fact not simple at all. Um, we're not going to cover that today, but if you are interested in looking at the Oxford comma or serial comma, then do check out our lesson on commas in a list on Century. We also use commas with certain words at the beginning of a sentence. Here we've got the sentences. Initially, they thought it was cute. However, it had the potential to destroy worlds. Here, the commas are used after the adverbs initially and however. There are several different types of adverbs and adverbials, and generally, if they're at the beginning of the sentence, they need to have a comma after them. What we are going to look at today, though, is looking at how to use commas to separate clauses. Here's an example of that. The creature, which had arrived on Earth only a month before, decimated the planet. Here, the commas are used to separate the clauses, and we're going to look at the rules that surround comma use here. We're also going to look at using commas to clarify meaning, and I'll explore that in more detail in just a moment, and also when not to use commas. And we're going to look at comma splicing. Now, comma splicing 
is when commas are incorrectly used in a sentence when another form of punctuation or a different word is needed. The really important thing to remember about commas is that they act as a slight pause in the sentence. If you're not sure whether or not to put a comma in a sentence, as you read it aloud, think about where you naturally pause. That is where you often, not always, but often will need to put that comma. So let's look at these two sentences. I'm not going to read these sentences aloud, but with that rule in mind about pausing when you see a comma, I want you to read these sentences aloud and think about what these two sentences actually mean. So, I love cooking my friends and pets. You'll notice how I read it there because there is no comma at all in the sentence. So what it currently means is that I love cooking my friends and my pets. If we place a comma after the word cooking, it clearly becomes a list, which means I love cooking, I love my friends, and I love my pets. Again, this sentence, let's eat grandma. Without the comma, what this is suggesting is that we want to eat grandma. By introducing the comma into the sentence here, it's clear that we are inviting grandma to eat. We're actually saving grandma's life with that comma. We can also turn this sentence around so it can be grandma let's eat. You'll notice in both cases there is a pause where that comma is. We've looked at why punctuation is really important uh, and changing the meaning of a sentence. Now let's look at using commas to separate clauses. So, in order to look at that, we need to explore a few words here. We need to remind ourselves that a clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. And two types of clauses are the independent clause, sometimes called the main clause, which is the action in the sentence, and it makes sense on its own. There's also a dependent clause, which is sometimes called a subordinate clause, which adds more information to the sentence. Now, these cannot be a sentence on their own. Let's look at this sentence. You'll notice today there is a theme of food. I'm going to read the sentence uh, and I want you to think about which is the independent clause here and which is the dependent clause. After we prepared the food, we ate the meal with grandma. Hopefully you identified we ate the meal with grandma as the independent clause. This can be a sentence by itself. The bit that can't be a sentence by itself, the bit that's adding information is after we prepared the food. In this sentence, because the dependent clause comes first, you'll notice that there is a comma after the word food. But if this sentence was the other way around, we ate the meal with grandma after we had prepared it, then there is no comma needed to introduce the dependent clause. This is where this reminder is gonna come in useful. Commas act as a pause. And in this case, there is less of a pause before you introduce the dependent clause. So no comma is needed. Let's look at another example of this. We can create any meal if we work together. I've got the independent clause at the beginning of the sentence followed by the dependent clause. So no comma is needed in this sentence. But if we say, if we work together, we can make any meal, we've got the dependent clause first followed by the independent clause. So here, we do need 
to have a comma after the dependent clause. And finally, we can also embed the dependent clause within the independent clause. So here we can, if we work together, make any meal. Is the independent clause split with the dependent clause in the middle? This again needs commas around the dependent clause to separate it from the independent clause. All well and good so far, but now let's introduce another type of dependent clause called a relative clause. Now, relative clauses start with a relative pronoun, which are that, when, which, where, and who. Now, relative clauses fall into two brackets, ones that add essential meaning to the sentence, and here they don't need to be separated by commas from the rest of the sentence, and those that don't add essential information to the sentence, and they always need to be separated by commas. We're going to illustrate this point with some examples because it can get quite confusing. The restaurant, which has been open 12 years, makes French food. Now in this sentence, the independent clause, the restaurant makes French food, is underlined here, and that can be a sentence by itself. The additional information in the relative clause, which has been open 12 years, is nice to have. It's extra information for the reader, but it isn't integral to the meaning of the sentence. And that means that that dependent clause needs to be separated from the independent clause by commas, as we can see here. But if we look at this sentence, the restaurant that I was talking about is over there. The independent clause in this sentence is the restaurant is over there. But in this case, the information that I was talking about is essential to the meaning of the sentence. It tells us which restaurant it is. Therefore, there are no commas to separate that dependent and independent clause. Let's look at some more examples. This time I'm going to leave these four sentences up here and I want you to think about whether or not these sentences need a comma based on everything that we've learned. What I am going to remind you before I leave you time to do this is that the comma represents a pause. So try reading the sentences out loud first. Let's look at some answers. In this first sentence, Jack, who has worked here 10 years, prepared your food. Hopefully you heard that there were pauses around the relative clause here. So if we identify the independent clause, Jack prepared your food, then we know that that makes sense by itself. So actually we do need to separate the relative clause from the rest of the sentence with these commas. In our next sentence, Jack is the chef who prepared your food. The independent clause here is Jack is the chef. Although that sentence does make sense by itself, it changes the meaning. Jack is what chef? What is important about Jack? So we don't need a comma in this sentence to separate Jack is the chef from the relative clause. In this sentence, Jack prepared your food, which I hope you enjoyed. The independent clause comes first. However, the dependent clause, which I hope you enjoyed, begins with a relative pronoun, which. So we know this is a relative clause. So we actually do need a comma here to separate it from the independent clause. And finally, the chef who made your food has 10 years experience. If we look at the 
independent clause here. The chef has 10 years experience, although that makes sense by itself. It changes the meaning of the sentence. The fact that he made your food is what makes that chef who he is. The fact that he made your food is relevant to the meaning of the sentence and therefore there are no commas needed. This is a really tricky aspect of commas so we will have another look at this in just a few minutes but let's just remind ourselves of why else we might need to use commas. Here are some more examples of when commas are needed to clarify the meaning in a sentence. In a second, I want you to read these two sentences out loud. I want you to think about the fact that commas act as a slight pause and think about where you pause naturally in these sentences. At the moment, there are no commas in this sentence. So I want you to think about what these sentences mean right now. Let's look at this first sentence. I'm going to read it as it stands at the moment. Mark walks behind the beaver holding a camera. As it stands at the moment, it suggests that the beaver is the one holding the camera. If we put a comma in here, what we're actually doing is also moving the camera into Mark's hand. Mark's walked behind the beaver holding a camera. This comma makes the meaning of this sentence clear. This sentence reads, the police chase the clown in a fast car. This may be intentional, but what it currently means is that the police are chasing the clown who is driving a fast car. A comma after the word clown changes the meaning of the sentence to mean that the police are in the fast car. The sentence now reads, the police chase the clown in a fast car. And finally, in this lesson, we're going to look at when not to use commas. This is as important as knowing when to use them. And sometimes it's really important that you check your work for additional commas that are not needed. We need to remind ourselves what a run on sentence is, which is when two main clauses are joined together with no punctuation or with a comma. So, for example, Rita went home at 4.30, Reuben went home later. Both Rita went home at 4.30 and Reuben went home later are independent clauses. So they certainly can't be left like this with nothing in between them. But they also can't have a comma to separate them because they are both independent clauses. So how can we fix this example of comma splicing? We could use some kind of conjunction. So here, Rita went home at 4.30, but Reuben went home later. This sentence is now fine. We could also use a semicolon. Rita went home at 4.30. Reuben went home later. Again, this sentence is now fine. And our final option is to separate it into two separate sentences. Rita went home at 4.30, full stop. Reuben went home later. Now let's look for an example of comma splicing in a paragraph and how we can fix it. What I want you to do here is to read this quite short paragraph. See if you can identify any comma splicing and think about what you might do to correct that. I'm going to give you 30 seconds.
hopefully you've read this now. And let's read it together and see if we can spot the comma splicing. Mount Kilimanjaro is the tallest mountain in Africa. It is 5,895 metres tall. I'm actually going to stop there because I've already noticed the comma splicing here. And this comma splicing is here. Both parts of this sentence, Mount Kilimanjaro is the tallest mountain in Africa and it is 5,895 metres tall, are independent clauses. They cannot be joined together with this comma. Let's see how to fix it. So we could put a semicolon in its place. Mount Kilimanjaro is the tallest mountain in Africa. It is 5,895 meters tall. What that semicolon does is show that these two independent clauses are closely related. We could also change the order of the sentence. At 5,895 metres tall, Mount Kilimanjaro is the tallest mountain in Africa and the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. In moving this sentence around, we've created a phrase at 5,895 metres tall from our second sentence, and we've combined the first and the third sentence in this passage. This makes a much more interesting read and makes the writing clearer and grammatically correct. So let's look at some examples of using commas to separate clauses in on century. So here we are on century and we are on Erin's recommended path. Now, this is where Century usually take you. This is their pathway. And each one of these is a little lesson or nugget on a particular lesson. And we can see that I've been recommended um, several lessons on punctuation. But I do know exactly what I want to do today. I want to look at commas. I want to check that I understand what we were learning earlier. So I'm going to go into the My Courses page up here on the left hand side and click in there. Now, in the courses page, you can see all the courses that you've been assigned. And this one is from the SPAG Key Stage 3 Essentials. And if I go into the search bar, I can type in commas and I can find all the different uh, nuggets I was talking about earlier. So if I'm interested in the Oxford comma, I might go to commas in the list. Uh, if I had so problems with that comma splicing that we did earlier, um, I would go to that lesson there as well. So uh, what it is that I am interested in is commas to separate clauses. That's uh, quite a challenging lesson we had today. So I think we can have a look in there. Now, there's a video, um, but I'm going to move on because I think we've learned about it today. And I'm going to have a look at this question. The question says, read the sentence, which arrow points to where a comma should be? So if I read the sentence, then you can have a go at this question. He is going to go on holiday once he has saved up enough money. Now, let's apply all the rules that we had earlier. We can see that number two is the most likely choice. Uh, because that's kind of where the uh, where the join between the independent and dependent clause is. But actually, which clause is first? You'll see that actually it is a independent clause that comes first. And therefore, actually, we don't need a comma for this sentence. So let's submit that answer and see where that takes us. Good, so the main clause or the independent clause comes first in the sentence, so a comma is not needed to separate the clauses. Excellent, let's try the next question. So read the sentences below. Which of these uses a comma correctly? Now I'm going to let you read those uh, and have a think. Think about what we were talking about before, about the pause and also whether or not the sentence starts with 
a dependent or an independent clause. So hopefully what you noticed is that when she comes home, I'll let her know you comes by, you came by, uh, or you popped by, sorry, is actually um, the uh, correct answer because what is happening here is that the dependent clause is at the beginning of the sentence followed by the independent clause. And then we can see that's exactly what it says in the feedback as well. So the dependent clause comes first, followed by the independent clause, we need a comma. Read this sentence, which arrow points to where a comma should be? Hopefully when you read that, you noticed that ever since the two met each other, is a dependent clause, they had been inseparable, is independent, and so there we can see the subordinate clause comes first in the sentence. Read these sentences, which of these is correct? Now for this question, it was an embedded clause. And if we just have a think about what we remember about embedded clauses, they need to be surrounded on both sides by commas, and it needs to go after the uh, a beginning of the relative clause and at the end of the relative clause. And so in that case, that would be this one here, Tommy, who used to live next door to me, recently moved to New York. And even when we read that out loud, we can hear the pauses. Tommy, who used to live next door to me, recently moved to New York. It's not essential to the meaning of the sentence, and so those commas are necessary. So, which arrow points to where a comma should be in this sentence? Now this is a tricky one because lots of people fall for this. Um, lots of people put a comma before because for no reason, if the sentence starts with the uh, independent clause like it does here, I'm going to visit Anna today because I haven't seen her in months, then we do not need a comma. But I'm actually gonna put the wrong answer here. I'm gonna put three. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want to show you um, what the reveals look like. So if you got the wrong answer accidentally, you can always uh, read the feedback and have a look if the main, here it says if the main clause comes first in the sentence, a comma is not normally needed. So it tells us what we did wrong and we can hit correct answer and we can see that this sentence does not need a comma um, is the correct answer. So we can see where we went wrong. So, I'm going to leave you to yourself again. Read these sentences and which one of these is correct. Once again here, we've got the dependent clause first, followed by an independent clause, which is if she saves up enough money. And if you remember in that case, uh, we, remember, we should remember that we do not need a comma. And so number two is the correct answer there. Well done. And I'm going to stop there for now. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this lesson. 
I hope you enjoyed it. And just a quick reminder on the screen now is um, the website that you can go to to sign up for Century. But uh, if that's also underneath as well. So don't worry if you haven't saved that. Anyway, thank you and have a